All right, so we are beginning our next chapter, which is going to cover work, power, and um, mechanical energy that I just kind of generally called energy here. So the first thing that we wanna focus on are just the words work and power. So these are the two main vocabulary words for this lesson. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we want to identify what the word work means. So work is defined as the result of a force applied to an object, which causes the object to experience a displacement. So if we just initially analyze the definition here, we see that we are dealing with force and we have a displacement. So understanding that our formula is going to involve force and displacement is step number one. But if you notice, the definition is very specific. This is not just a general, a force is applied type of thing. This is a specific situation where the force has to be directly related to the displacement that the object experiences. And understanding that relationship is going to help with some of the conceptual questions. So it says here that we are going to um, measure work in a new unit called a joule. So our new unit here is a joule. And we're gonna represent that with a capital J. So our equation says that we are going to take force and multiply it by the displacement that the object experiences. Now I wanna take a moment and remind you that both force and displacement are vector values. So the direction of the force is going to be important. We can have some positive and some negative values that we put in for both of these variables, which means that work can be both positive and negative. Um, when we get into the specifics of how we're gonna plug our numbers in, what that means when we have a positive work and we have a negative work, now it's gonna be more than just saying that I understand there's a direction involved. Um, at this point, we expect that you are capable of comprehending the big picture, what is the scenario, what is physically taking place in the story, um, what type of information is relevant to this situation that's going to guide my math work. And so as we continue through this chapter, you're going to notice that I'm going to say that some of our variables in this chapter are scalar quantities, which means that we are only taking the magnitude of that value. All of our answers will be expressed as the absolute value version of our calculation or um, whatever we are calculating. Either we have this much of it or we don't, okay? Then we're going to say some of our variables are vectors where the direction is going to be expressed as a positive or negative, and so that will dictate whether we are adding or subtracting. We may have some variables where we need to correctly express that that final answer is a positive value or a negative value. So. I hope that your comprehension of the vocabulary and um, some of the specific variables that we've discussed by now are clear because it's no longer just kind of a black and white thing as far as this will always be positive negative. This will always be, it, it's gonna depend on the situation and what we are discussing. So work is defined as force times displacement where we are going to take our force in Newtons and we are going to multiply that times our displacement in meters. And so we are going to end up with a unit called a Newton meter. As you read through the work, uh, word problems, as you guys are completing your own calculations and expressing your answers, you may see the unit for work expressed as a Newton meter. That's because we're multiplying Newtons times meters. But what you will see most often is that we have taken this unit Newton meter and we have decided to give that collect a collection of units a new name and we're going to refer to it as a joule. So most of the questions that you are going to see um, we will we'll express the unit for work in joules and that will often be represented with a capital J. So our formula is over here to the right in the yellow box. Work is equal to force times displacement where a capital W is work. Notice that this is straight line capital W for work 
capital F for force, D for our displacement. Now it says in the definition that the force applied needs to cause the displacement. If we were in an advanced level class, we would talk in more detail about the um, direction of the work, the direction of the force, the direction of the displacement, and we would be a little bit more nitpicky as to the interpretation here. Technically, what we need to know is that the force and the displacement need to be along the same axis. But for our class, the questions are going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to keep everything linear and um, we're not going to deal with angles, which we would typically deal with angles in an advanced level class. So because our situations that we are going to be addressing in this class are pretty simple and straightforward, I'm going to keep that definition pretty simple and straightforward. Okay. It says here in red, the only, um, only the force component that is in the same direction as the motion can count as work. So what we want you to recognize with this image and this statement is that if I have this box and I apply a force along the direction of vector C, well, my common sense tell me, tells me vector C is not going to perform any work because um, I'm pushing down on the box and that's not going to allow the box to move. There's a floor in the way. The dotted box over to the right is where we are trying to move the box. So vector C, it will be no work. And my common sense just kind of guides that. Um, if I look at the definition or the explanation here, the force needs to be in the same direction as the motion. My force would be downward and my displacement would be zero. Okay, so if we're trying to plug it into our equation, we end up with a work of zero because my displacement is zero. If we look at vector A, vector A is directed to the right, so this means that my force is going to be applied to, to the right. I should be able to accomplish a, a displacement and be able to move the box over here to the right. So then that means that I would have a force to the right. I would have the resulting displacement because of that force also to the right. So box A would absolutely do work. And if I say that the force for each of these vectors is 10 newtons, and I move my box, according to the illustration, a displacement of one meter, I would specifically do 10 newtons of work because 10 newtons, I'm sorry, 10 newton meters of work because 10 newtons of force times one meter displacement is going to give me 10 newton meters, which once again, we're gonna use most often our new unit of joules. So then let's look at vector B. Vector B is showing that I have my force that is applied at a diagonal. Now I know I just said we're not gonna deal with angles in here, so I'm not gonna make you do the specifics of the math, but I still want to address the conceptual application here. We've discussed um, diagonals in previous chapters where we understand that every diagonal has a vertical component to that diagonal as well as a horizontal component. So if my force for each of these vectors is 10 newtons, that means of those 10 newtons, I have some of that force that's going to be applied in the downward direction. And that downward force, just like with vector C, is not going to contribute towards the work that I do in order to move the box horizontally because the force is downward. So that downward component will produce zero newtons of force because it is not in the same direction as the displacement. If I look at the component that is along the horizontal axis, let's just get us a different color here so we can see what we're talking about. If I look at the horizontal component of those 10 newtons diagonally, some of the 10 is going to allow my object to get moved to the right. And so it will contribute towards that work because it is force times displacement. The piece 
of the tin. Now we're not going to go through the specifics of determining how much force. Let me just make up a number. Let's say of that diagonal 10 newtons, let's say that 7 newtons is actually oriented along the horizontal axis and will contribute to the horizontal displacement. If we also move it one meter, because that's what it's showing in the picture, horizontally, now when I go to calculate the amount of work that is done, I can say that B will do work, but only some of that force component is going to contribute into the amount of work that is done. I am no longer using the full 10. I made up a value of 7, something less than 10. So now when I multiply force times displacement, even though I'm applying 10 newtons because of that diagonal component, I'm only doing 7 joules of work. So conceptually speaking, I am going to see that of these three force vectors, assuming that they all are equal magnitudes of force, vector A will produce the greatest amount of work because all of the force is oriented along the same axis, specifically in the same direction as the resulting displacement. When we talk about um, some of those conceptual questions, the amount of force is going to um, dictate how much work is done as well as the displacement. So you are going to get conceptual questions and you're gonna get some math questions where we tell you that someone is lifting an object. So it says here, the force applied to lift an object at a constant speed is equal to the weight of the object. So if we recall from previous lessons, it is the net force that is responsible for accelerating our object. And in the reading, it says we are going to lift our object at a constant speed. So if we think back to um, chapter three, where we're talking about forces, the gravitational force and the applied force would have to be equal magnitudes in order for that speed to remain constant. Okay, so when we say that the net force is the sum of our forces, where in this case, this gravitational force would be in the negative direction and the applied force is in the positive direction, I could choose to write this as F net is equal to FA minus FG, okay? So if I express my equation this way, Then, let me go ahead and just kind of clean this up so it's not so confusing. Um, if I express my equation this way, then I want to show you um, how that is going to affect our math work, okay? It says here that it's a constant speed, so that means that my net force value is going to come up to a value of zero. So if I am trying to do um, some sort of calculation to solve for my applied force or to solve for my gravitational force, I would simply need to add Fg to both sides. And so what I'm going to end up with is that my gravitational force, aka the weight of the object, is equal to my applied force. So with that being said, if they are asking us in a word problem to um, figure out how much work was done to lift our object, the force being used to lift the object is equal to the weight of the object. That's what this equation here is showing me. So if I am, um, I was trying to grab that box there, sorry. If I am trying to show you how that looks in an equation, the work is equal to the force times the displacement, where we would take our force and we would replace it with mass times gravity, because remember, that's how we calculate the weight of the object. So any question where you are being asked 
about work being done to lift an object. We are going to say the work done to lift an object is equal to the mass of that object times gravity times the displacement that it experiences. Now, work is actually a scalar quantity. So when we put our value in for gravity, we're gonna use a positive 9.8 here. We are not going to say work is um, negative or work is positive for the most part. We are going to be calculating how much work was performed. And then conceptually, we will look at the big picture to decide whether the work is being added or subtracted from our situation. So we're gonna get in the habit of just plugging in a positive 9.8 here, okay? If we are asked questions about holding an object or carrying an object, we have to go back to focusing on the fact that the force must be along the same axis or the way that I've worded it here, in the same direction as a displacement in order for work to be done. So if you are asked about a situation where someone or something is holding an object, we need to understand that there is zero work done. And that would be because the object does not experience a displacement in the same direction as the object. And I'm sorry, in the same direction as the force. In fact, if we were to think about what our um, free body diagram would look like. If something is being held, there would be no acceleration, which means there would be no net force. So these two forces would be balanced, so the net force acting on our object would be zero, which means when we go to plug in, work is equal to force times displacement, we have a net force of zero. If we were to plug in uh, work is equal to force times displacement, we would have a displacement of zero. It is being held in place. So both values in this case would be zero, okay? If we look at a situation where it says that an object is being carried, a lot of times students want to say that work is being done because they imagine that the object is moving. And that is true, the object is moving. But if I think about a situation where an object is being carried, then I want you to recognize that the force to carry the object, we are probably pushing up on the object in order to carry that object. But if we are walking around as we carry the object, then the displacement is actually going to be horizontal. These two are not along the same axis. They are not in the same direction. My force would be upward. My displacement would be um, to the right or to the left. And so because they are not in the same direction, or along the same horizontal axis, then we would also say that no work is done. So these are conceptual questions that you will see in the future. They are not intended to be trick questions. They are really intended to be vocabulary questions. Do you comprehend the definition of work and the idea that those vectors have to be along the same axis? All right, so then I ask you, what happens to the work if I double the force? Well, if I double the force, then that means that I am doing twice the work because I'm taking two times F. So from this, I want you to remember that when we are interpreting the relationship in these questions, work is equal to force times displacement. Force and displacement are both um, in the numerator work is both is also in the numerator so any type of change that i make to my force work will experience the same type of change they are directly related okay so doubling my force means that i double the work if i ask you what happens if i double the um distance what happens to the work well if i double the distance then that means I'm also going to double the work that was being done. The same situation or the same explanation applies. If work is equal to force times displacement, if I double this displacement, I'm multiplying D by two, then whatever type of change I make to my displacement, I get the same type of change 
on my work because work is also directly related to displacement. So make sure that you are capable of answering these types of questions. Now let's look at the vocabulary word power. Power is the rate at which work is done. Remember, anytime we see the word rate, this means that we are dividing by time. So if I look at my equation, I have capital P for power. So don't get this confused with the previous um, lowercase p that we were dealing with. This is a capital P for power. Again, it's a capital W for work divided by a lowercase t for time. So my equation is P is equal to W over T. My definition is power is the rate at which work is done. And so we are going to be taking our unit of work, which we have addressed already, is measured in joules, and we're going to divide it by our time measured in seconds. And so when we do the math here, we get joules per second, sorry, that's supposed to say seconds, we get joules per second. So you could do some calculations and get joules per second and express that as your final answer. But what we will do instead is we will choose to express that with a lowercase w for the unit watt. So notice we have a capital W for the variable work, and then we have a lowercase w for the unit of watts, which belongs to the vocabulary word power. So understanding the difference between variables and units, I know I addressed this back in unit zero, <laughs> the very first week of the course. Some students are still not sure what I mean when I say variable compared to what I mean when I say unit. Please make sure that you understand the difference. In this chapter, it will be very easy to get the two confused, so please ask for clarification if needed. Um, if we give you a situation where we say that we are going to double the power, what does that mean? Well, because power is work divided by time, um, if I want to know if I double the power, so if I have two people and I am comparing what they are capable of doing, if my more powerful person has twice the power, that could mean two different things. It could mean that this person performed the same amount of work, but only took half the amount of time to do that. That could be why they were twice as powerful. So if you picture um, two people, we use Mickey Mouse and The Rock in a previous chapter. So let's just compare that. If I am asking Mickey Mouse to lift a box and put it on a shelf, and I ask The Rock to lift the same box and put it on the shelf, well, The Rock is definitely more powerful than Mickey, and so they can both perform the same work. Lifting the box to put it on the shelf would be the same force and distance because the weight of the box is the force needed to lift it, right? So they would do the same work, but The Rock should be able to do it in much less time. The Rock would be able to do it more quick as a lot of people would say, he would be faster, right? It would require less time for him to do that. So because it takes less time, he would be more powerful. So I need to understand that between power and time, they are inversely related. Less times means more power. And so that is just a relationship question. If I ask you about um, the rock being twice as powerful as Mickey, what does that mean in terms of the work that they do? Well, it could also mean that the rock is able to do twice as much work in the same amount of time as Mickey. So maybe I want them to um, do work, but I only give them 10 seconds to do it. Well, because the rock is more powerful, he is going to be able to perform more work in that amount of time because of his increased power. So power and work, if I look at my formula, are both in the numerator, and so they are going to be directly related. So make sure you are capable of answering these types of conceptual questions.